problem of corruption, illegal logging, for example. Part of it is um, part of the problem is the fact that even the structures that are in place are corrupted. You know, people are paid. Is this what's the state like for mining? Well, uh, all I can say in mining, we have not uh, faced any issue of uh, corrupt officials. Mm -hmm. uh, so far, we have been uh, able to get our permits uh, on time, uh, uh, on a regular basis. We have had not any problems with that, and, and we appreciate that, of course, from the government. Uh, we make it a point, of course, that all the requirements under the law are complied with, mm -hmm. and we su submit it. And uh, as, as, as far as, I'm, uh, as I know, since I've joined the company just uh, recently, uh, we have had not any, um, no major problems with respect to getting all our permits. How did you explain the EO to your to your investors? Because Felix is a, it's a public company. How how did they react to it? What does it mean that now that the ground is shifting slightly? Um, we I haven't had a chance yet to explain uh, to to our investors. Uh, uh, also, our head of investor relations have yet to formally explain to our investors exactly what the effects of this EO are. In fact. We recently we just met when the EO came out uh, the same day we met uh, so so that we can effectively craft our messaging based on the EO. But perhaps uh, let me just say in general yes. that uh, uh, of course the EO would uh, have effects uh, on any mining company for yes. that matter, and definitely we will prepare uh, to make sure that we're able to address all the issues in relation to the EO. Fantastic. Let me throw some questions to sure. you from social media. Several have been coming in now. Uh, from at Joey Villarinte, um, will the EO affect the company's PX and LC fundamentals? Um, I won't be in a position yet to uh, give details. Uh, give us time to take a look at the EO because we're definitely been, uh, are studying it right now. We're looking at each and every provision and how it will impact on the company. But let us just say that uh, I think the, the, the impact, especially for existing operations, will be minimal, if at all. Fantastic. From at Elaine Spilsit, what benefits does mining have aside from economic growth in the long term? Well, uh, let, me, let me put it this way. Uh, the Philippines, as you correctly mentioned earlier, we're blessed. We're a highly mineralized country. They say, uh, the ADB, the World Bank yeah. would say we're sitting on $848 billion, 7 trillion pesos. I mean, it, the, perhaps it varies a bit here and there, but the message is very clear. We're very rich in natural resources. Top five in gold, copper, nickel. What did it? be ironic and if I may use the word ironic yes. and s sad that if faced with all this richness we're not able to develop it to be able to use it to help our people to help our country as our chairman mm. very eloquently said mm. mining is not the enemy mm. poverty is and we have the resources we have the answers staring at our faces or maybe if I may uh, pun intended uh, we are actually stepping on them yes. or sitting on them under our noses yes. and it would be sad and I think it would be sinful mm -hmm. and the Bible I think is replete with that you know you're given so much blessings and don't you don't use it wisely mm -hmm. then that would be tantamount to a sin of omission perhaps mm -hmm. so all, all we're saying is that it's there mm -hmm. let's use it responsibly mm -hmm. let's mine it out admittedly mm -hmm. it's an extractive industry so definitely you will be disturbing the environment yes. therefore since you are disturbing the environment, you pay for that disturbance. Mm -hmm. And you make sure in the cost and benefit analysis that whatever is disturbed, the benefits far outweigh the cost. And the cost and the benefits are properly shared by mm -hmm. all, stake all stakeholders, mm -hmm. the industry, mm -hmm. government, the local government where it is being, uh, the mining is being done, and the general public. Yes. Everyone should benefit from it. If other countries can do it, mm -hmm. I don't see any reason why the Philippines cannot do it. The complaint by the communities around some of the mining companies is that they don't share enough in the resources. Is this a valid complaint? Well, admittedly, there has been some complaints. We, have a ch we had the chance to talk to a number of local government officials. And the sad part is uh, their complaint is that, one, the share is not enough. Mm -hmm. Uh, mm -hmm. Although there are shares already provided for in the local government code, right. they feel it's not enough, mm -hmm. as well as it does not come on time. 
Mm. And that definitely is something that government, together with the industry, as well as the local governments, can definitely uh, address. All they have to do, if I'm not mistaken, would be to coordinate between the Department of Management, the local government units, as well as the mining companies, and perhaps the BIR. But if I may, uh, of course, being with Felix, if I may. Yes, please. If I may, Maria. You're, as you're far Felix's as Felix is concerned. Yes, of course. Uh, and our president uh, made it very clear in one forum. He did say that our local government units get their share within a year. And, and this is really very good. Excellent. Um, this is a question from Nikki Luna, at Nikki Luna, uh, the artist. Ni uh, Nikki Luna, the artist. Yes. Hi, Nikki. Um, any adaptation measures for communities threatened by mining projects with long-standing mining operations? What do you do for the communities? <clears throat> well, for the communities at present, for example, in Patkal, in, in, in Benguet, where we have our uh, biggest uh, gold mining operations, uh, we have li livelihood programs. What we have what we call help. We have uh, livelihood programs, we have uh, environmental programs, uh, we have uh, hospitalization, we have educational programs, we have schools there, we have help schools, build classrooms, uh, join government in the uh, ADAPA school programs, uh, sponsored uh, the St. Louis Colleges uh, scholarship. We have graduated more than 100,000 students uh, in, 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 in a number of our schools, and some of them, if I may say, are working already in government, working with Felix for that matter, and working with other mining companies and in other offices. In fact, our president, mm -hmm. Mr. Jules Austin, who we are very proud of is an in, a member of uh, an indigenous people's tribe, is now the president of the largest mining company, and he is a product of St. Louis. So. We make it a point in all the mining sites that we operate, or even on those mining sites where we are still in the exploration stage, that we already provide infrastructure, and that takes the form of water, roads, electrification, mm -hmm. uh, that we provide livelihood mm -hmm. uh, to make sure that there's ongoing livelihood within the mine area where we mine, mm -hmm. as well as the out, out, uh, outlying provinces, and or rather communities and towns. Uh, we, may, we make sure that we have hospitals, we even have uh, medical missions, dental missions, and all that. And we make sure also that uh, pursuant not only to the law, but because it's already really part of our program, yeah. that in the, when the time comes that we have to go, because mine life, as from the term life, it always yes. has an ending. Right. So that when we leave, one, we will provide livelihood to the mm -hmm. people that are left behind. Mm -hmm. And number two, that the mine area or where we mine mm -hmm. will not only be restored, to what it was before, but mm -hmm. even better, mm -hmm. to even put it to a state much better than when we arrived. So if Felix is a, is a good mining um, citizen, right? What about all of the bad examples we've had in the past? I mean, I remember <coughs> in 1987, Mark Copper, that the spewing yes. out of the, the waste into the water, um, uh, several, Placer Dome, I think, yeah. happened right after. H how do you cur curtail the negative, the costs, and, and get the benefits from, you know, from the Philippines mining. That's true. And uh, one should never deny that these things did happen, not only in the Philippines, but in other countries. In other countries, sure. Uh, it indeed, is an extractive yes, process, right? So that, it's that has happened, it and we've seen it, not only in mining, but in oil and in, in all other industries. But uh, that did happen. These were what we call the legacy mines. And it happened at a time when perhaps we didn't have in place the more recent laws, yes. stringent requirements. Uh, things have changed, times have changed. What we're saying is that, uh, of course, we can never say when an accident will happen, but we must be prepared. And that's why we have to have it, everything in place in case of an accident, yes. the mining company must be able to provide uh, the mitigating uh, solutions. But I guess uh, we cannot stop because yes. of accidents. I mean, if that is the case, then the airline industry would not thrive. Because we all know that there goes one way or the other, despite all the modern airplanes, all the modern uh, technologies, somehow, for whatever reason, there are airplane crashes, but it will not make us stop from flying or from uh, allowing people to fly. In the same thing, perhaps, we can say about mining. Uh, we, we don't want accidents. Who wants accidents yes. to begin with? But if such happens, the mining company responsible, if ever it is responsible mm -hmm. for such mm -hmm. an accident, must pay. That's non-negotiable. They have to be made responsible. Yes. So look, you have some supporters on social media. Arnold Cesar Romero, his uh, Twitter handle is at Nadi Romero, says natural wealth should be allowed to be transformed into physical and social wealth for all. Um, 
Pinoy Minero at Responsible Miner. We don't know who this is. Uh, has two tweets for you. Science plus tech plus responsibility equals sustainable mining. And his question is, how can we clean up the demonized image of the mining industry? You know, the only way to clean it up is to tell the truth about what we're doing. For me, it's the truth well told. Mm -hmm. uh, the best way to convince people that mining works is to be able to show the results of good, responsible, sustainable mining. That's the only way. No amount of spin, no amount of advertisement, no about amount of lobbying can ever convince somebody. You must just show that you're doing the right thing. And by doing the right thing, people will see it, people will feel the results. And in time, people indeed, in my opinion, will be convinced that this is the right thing to do. Fantastic. We are on our last question. I mean, now you have a, an EO, you talked about the moratorium. What's next? What do you want to see happen next? Well, what, what we want to see happen next, uh, of course, is that we move on. Uh, it's unfortunate that the mining industry have taken a back seat because for one, the 1995 Mining Act was questioned in the Supreme Court. Right. So it languished in the court for seven years that deprived us again of investments coming in the country and uh, because uh, of, uh, of the bad rap that mining has been getting, yes. uh, I guess there has been a lot of delays uh, in, uh, in as far as the processing and work is concerned and investments is con are concerned. So we're hoping that with the EO, we can move on. We are hoping, of course, that uh, a lot of these uh, revenue new enhancement measures and uh, other pieces of legislation to ensure sustainable responsible mining and mm -hmm. people getting what they deserve out of mining are put into place we're looking forward to that because at the end of the day uh, Maria we at Felix it's, it's really simple the philosophy is simple we must develop what we have to address the needs of the present without without compromising the ability of future generations to meet their own needs. That's how simple it is. Let's, let's do what we can. We have needs at present, but let's not be selfish because we are just stewards of what we have right now. Mm -hmm. We are stewards of the environment, mm -hmm. but it doesn't mean you do not use what you have. Mm -hmm. responsible, a responsible environmentalist, in my opinion, in the same way that a responsible miner is, somebody who knows that there is something to be developed, it should be developed responsibly, it should be develop, develop uh, taking into consideration the environmental impacts. Mm -hmm. Whatever is developed should be properly shared, but taking into consideration that there will be future generations mm -hmm. who will have the same needs or even more, mm -hmm. and we should provide for that. Fantastic. Wonderful. Mike. Attorney Mike Toledo, thank you so much no, for joining you. us you. today. Um, it, was, um, it was a pleasure to be here, really. And knowing I mean, to be it's an honor really for me to be interviewed by Thank you. I have Maria. to say it is it actually has been difficult to get a pro mining voice for today you we called many many people and thank you so much for for also coming in and uh, taking a position um, for those on social media thank you for sitting through both uh, anti and pro voices at hashtag why mining there's a microsite that is up please join your voices uh, at Joey Villarante at responsible miner Nikki Luna several others you're, you're interested, make your voices heard. We'll see you soon.